Welcome everyone to the second webinar in our series of short Load Runner Enterprise and Load Runner Cloud webinars. My name is Anders Nilsson and I'm the Technical Solutions Consultant for Load Runner Cloud and Load Runner Enterprise on SaaS. And we are here in today's webinar going to look at the results dashboard in Load Runner Cloud. So for users coming from a performance center or Load Runner Enterprise background, and are used to this standalone analysis. This might be a slight change in how to work with the Learn and Cloud results dashboard. And this is simply due to LRE and Learn and Cloud are two separate products with different ways of doing things. But in general, the Learn and Cloud results dashboard have more or less the same capabilities as the LRE analysis. But if there is something that you feel is missing or could be done better, we would like to ask you to please raise those items in the ID exchange, which is displayed on the screen here now. And the uh, product management team for Learner Cloud will then often have a look there and take those IDs into consideration. So I will do a quick demo here today using the results from a very simple web test that basically ran two scripts against a demo website. And again, as for any demo, I will have to start from the beginning with the basic stuff and then uh, go on from there. So it might be that you already know a lot of this and that would be great. And But if not, I hope you will pick up something new here today. And I would also like to point out that I'll be using the new dashboard and uh, report here today. And if anyone is still using the old dashboard, it is now time for you to switch over to start using a new one since access to the old one will be removed in the near future. When we first open up the results of the test, we will be presented with the default dashboard graphs, which are the running vector users, the throughput, the hits per second, and the errors graph. And out here on the left, we have, of course, where we have all the graphs and measurements that are available to us. And they can then be expanded down into each script, transaction, location, and also other measurements. We also have a tab system here at the bottom, uh, which are persistent and can be renamed. So this then allows for different tabs showing different snapshots of the results. And they can even include graphs from different runs uh, when comparing such. So by adding a new tab here, that then allows me to add any of the metrics from uh, the window on the left here. So if I want the uh, running virtual users graph, or I can want the throughput graph in the same window, I can just overlay them like that. And for example, when you want to kind of look for correlations. But when we have two graphs with such different measurements in them, they can be a little bit hard to compare. So to make them a little bit more easy to read, we can change the uh, from no scale, and or we can select to a logarithmic scale. And we can also select to use the automatic scale. And using this last one here will then uh, make it easier to compare and it will paint a better picture of the graph. And we can see here that the running vector users graph and the throughput graphs follow each other quite well, as would be expected. But if I, for example, would like to have the measurements in separate graphs, I can then split this graph here and I can move the uh, throughput uh, measurements from the top graph and down to the bottom graph here. And we can also, of course, split the graphs even more times if you want. So if I, for example, let's say I want to split this one more in, in a, a vertical way, and I can add the errors graph in here as well. And we can then, of course, see a number of errors in here. And if I do want to zoom into a particular area in one of the graphs, I can simply just click and drag the mouse pointer in that graph and uh, that will then be replicated in all the graphs on the same tab. And we can also see that the uh, time slater up here changes accordingly. So if I would like to view a different uh, part of the test, I can simply move a slider and that will then be reflected in the graphs below. And I can also narrow it down if I would like to. And then to, uh, if I want to reset out again and want to see the complete uh, load test, I can just double click in one of the graphs and it will then move out and display all of the data from the complete test. So if I now would like to know, for example, where from where these script errors came from, I can uh, simply drill down into the errors graph. So let me close some of the other graphs here. And uh, currently we're showing all the errors from all the scripts, but if I open it up, the error graphs here, I can then select to show the uh, errors from one script at a time. And for this script here, we see no errors. And from the second script here, 
we can say, okay, okay, this is where all the errors are coming from for this script. We also have a list of the, all the script errors has been, that has been generated throughout the test. Uh, and if you click the script errors button here, and if we, for example, would like to see them in added as a table widget, we can just add it to the dashboard here, and they will then be show up here as well. And if I now, for example, feel that we've highlighted something important here, we can then leave this tab here and return to it later on if needed, since these tabs are, as mentioned earlier, they are persistent. If we then want to see how our transactions did in our test here, we can then drill down in the transactions tree here. And if we look at, for example, at the transaction response time average graph, we then have our two scripts underneath here. And if I expand the first one here, we then have a list of all the transactions that were part of it. And if we want to see one of them, we can manually uh, select to view those. But if you have a large number of transactions in here, that would be a lot of clicking. So you can also then either right click on the, uh, the to see all the transactions here, or if you just want to see them for this script here, you can right click and then select to show all the transactions that were part of this script here. And we can see that's a lot of data here, but if I then would like to, for example, for the first initial homepage transaction here, if I then would like to compare how did it run from the different locations, so we can see here we, we ran it from London and we ran it from Hong Kong as well. I can also select that, so I select the Hong Kong location and I select the uh, London location. And when they, we can then see the differences in the, how those geographical locations uh, affected the running of the scripts here. But if you have been using uh, some of the emulations as well, we can also go drill down and compare those. So for example, the London location here, we can then have a look at how it ran when we ran on a good WAN and compare that how it ran on Wi-Fi. And we can then of course see that the, the WAN connection is a lot quicker compared to the Wi-Fi connection. Now, if you, if you run a test with a large number of transactions, you can then get a better overview of the transaction data by opening up the transaction summary that we have up here, which will then be displayed in a tab of its own. And it will provide such data as the, the max, average, and the min, min, minimum transaction response time. We'll see the past and failure ratios and also the average transaction per second through, throughout the test. And if we look at the bottom of the table here, uh, we can then see that the transactions from that script didn't really fare that well. So if we then want to look into that, we can open up a new tab here and we can then have a look at the total transactions graph and just select to show the transactions from the HTTP demo script. And if we select both of the transactions here, we can then see here that the initial transaction, the homepage transaction, uh, did quite well. But the second one, the select speakers, that one didn't have a single pass transaction. So if we then overlay that with the running the users graph for the, uh, for the HTTP demo script here, we can then see that um, this was an issue for the whole duration of the script run. And it was not something that just suddenly happened throughout the test. And if we have any monitoring solution integrated with Lono Cloud, those graphs will also be available here. So if I then open up the monitors that I used been using here and open up the uh, CPU graph uh, or the CPU resources, we can then see that we do have a quit of the big spike here. And if we then would overlay that with, for example, the throughput graph here, we, and let's change the scale here, we might think that we have a bit of a correlation here. But if I then drill down further in the throughput and I select again one of the scripts here, we can see that we definitely have a correlation here with the HTTP demo script. And if we then also add in the running value users graph for that same script, we can then be quite sure to see who is the culprit here. And knowing that we would like to look deeper into this later on, we can then select to add this graph to the report by clicking the button here. And that will then allow us to have this graph included in the report afterwards. So if you look at this huge CPU spike here, we might be interested to see if this is something that happened in other tests as well or not. So if I just show the CPU spike here, 
And so for us to be able to compare two tests, we can click on the compare button up here and then we can select which run we would like to compare to. So let's select this one here, click compare. And that will then overlay the CPU monitor graphs from those two, two runs. And looking at the, 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 our current run we're looking at, this is where we have a spike and this is what happened in the other run. So this spike was then something that only happened in our current test. So again, this might be something that's worth investigating. So we can add that to the report as well. And let's open a new tab here. And uh, at the lower end of the tree here, we have the uh, breakdown graph, which is uh, the graph that is enabled on the single user performance tab when setting up a load test. And if we expand that down into we can then see for each of the single transactions, the, we can see the network breakdown, uh, i.e. where the most time was spent for each transaction. So if you look at the initial homepage transaction here, we can see another spike here. And if I just mouse over here a little bit, we can see that's the weight metric that takes a long time here. And that is then the average amount of time taken for all the HTTP requests, which are waiting for a response from the server. And again, so that might be something we want to add to the report and then investigate. And for this test here, I did set up some SLAs for the test. And those are then tracked under the SLA warnings up here. And so any breaks or SLA warnings will show up here. And if I select, for example, the first one here and select to add it to the new pane here, uh, it will then be added in the graph. And if I then double click on the graphs, it will then zoom out and it will then show where and when this break happened. And we can then see from also from which location it happened, which was from London, and it was during the Wi-Fi emulation. And if we look at the time of this spike here, we can then see that it, it is matching a little bit with the weight spike in the breakdown graph. So again, there's a high probability that they might be related. Throughout the demo here, you might, you might have seen some additional colors in the graphs, and those are related to what is called anomalies. And this is part of the predictive analytics, which tries to automatically detect unexpected behavior, just like the SLA warnings. And they are then listed at the top here as well. And if we, for example, select the last one here, and we select the transaction response time average here, I'll close that one and um, let's zoom out in the graph as well to highlight it a little bit um, this bit will then show us exactly what triggered the anomaly and how it works is that during the white area here for the first couple of minutes then this is where the uh, tool is learning about the metric and what be, might be the expected values for it and after that, when the tool think it knows about this, we get this gray envelope here. And that is then where the tool expects the measurements to, to stay inside or stay within. But as soon as a value then breaks the outside of that, like this spike here, that is when, then when an anomaly is triggered, which is then the orange area we can see here. And there are a few more minor uh, breaks outside of that as well when an anomaly is triggered. But, um, but sometime after that, the tool then see that, okay, we are back to normal level again, and we can then get back into the gray area, which is the expected area again. So these anomalies are a very good tool to use when you initially look at the results of a test where they can provide a first idea on where to actually start looking. So with this anomaly, we can then perhaps Again, overlay the uh, CPU resources, if we took a look at them down here. And uh, well, I mean, that might or might not be related, uh, but it certainly provides a starting point for your analysis here. And also at the same time, if you, if you do have some experience already in doing the analysis of the results of the test, you will most likely find these anomalies yourself but again, it's, it, it's a very good starting point on where to actually start looking. There is also the option to export all the raw transaction data into a CSV file if required. And that is then something that some customers like to do. And it's basically just to, for them to 
work their own um, well Excel magic on the data, so to say. And I haven't done it for this test here, but that is something you have to enable on the general tab when setting up the performance test. And once you have exported it, you will get it into a spreadsheet like this. And you will have a large number of data points in here because this is absolutely all the data or transactional data that was generated throughout the test. So if you feel that you need a little bit more granularity or you just want to do your own magic or pivot tables, you do have access to all that data as well from here. If we now switch to the report that's been generated for this test here, uh, there are a number of default items that can be selected to be included in the report. Uh, there's of course the summary of the test, and but we can also have a uh, list of, for example, the top 10 transactions. We can have a uh, overview of the past versus failed transactions, for example. But what I wanted to show here is mostly the, uh, the, the items at the bottom here. And so this is then where we can have the graphs that we uh, have added from the results dashboard. And if you have any other graph that you want to add or configure in the dashboard, they can then be added here in the same manner. And so I'm just gonna, if we highlight those, we can see it's exactly the same graphs that we saw on the, uh, in the dashboard. And if we then would like to, uh, for example, email this out or send it out to uh, some of the colleagues or uh, management, you can then also export this report as a PDF file. And it takes a little bit of time to generate that, maybe you know, 20, 30 seconds. But once it's ready, you can then go and uh, look at the results for that. And if I download that, we will be provided a report here. And this is then the PDF report that is available to us. And it will also then contain all the graphs we looked at and we added to the report. So we have now come to the end of what I wanted to present here to you today. And uh, so we are basically at the end of the webinar here. And I thank you all for your time here today. And I hope it was beneficial for you and that you found it interesting. And I also hope that I will see you back at the next webinar in about months, one month's time. Thank you very much. Yeah.